everybody welcome back to Rachel Bella Crafts Rachel here I hope you are well and welcome to my channel if it is the first time that you're here visiting um, and if you are a previous subscriber thank you for your support and welcome back so unless you've perhaps been away on a holiday or just haven't been on YouTube for the last two weeks um, you might not be aware but we're actually in the middle of a collaboration so what is a collaboration a collaboration is where a group of people it could be any kind of collaboration uh, in this case it's creative youtubers who get together and work on a combined project together but together but separately sometimes so in this case we are all working together but we're doing it separately on our different channels so if you go to uh, my Kofi page there is a link tree in the description box down below now for anybody who doesn't know what that means description box down below well if you're on YouTube and you look just down below the video where the writing bit is and where it just, like, describes the video you're watching, if, you, if you're on your phone, I think if you kind of like click on it and it opens up or if you click more or something, um, you'll see all the details then about my video. Um, and at the top, there should be a link. That's a link tree. And there'll be a bit of writing above it that says, click here for more information on the collaboration. If you click on the link tree, it'll take you then to literally a web page that has all of the links, all of the names and all the schedule of everybody taking part and their date in date, date order. Um, so today we are on the 28th and you will have two videos go up today. One video from myself, that's me, Rachel Bella Crafts, and one video from the lovely Angela Kerr over on her channel as well. Um, you can download this prompt sheet. This is what's on Kofi. Um, it's under collaboration freebies number one um, and we had one or two changes back last week but the current copy that's on there has been updated okay so if you did want to go and get the most up-to-date copy go grab that as well um, and it does say on there uh, our prompt for today is delightful embossed digitals oh my gosh I wonder where we're both going to go with that so one other thing just to add in case you aren't aware like I say if you are new to the collaboration if you're not new please bear with me we are running two different styles every day so you'll have two creators who will do a video the purpose is to be able to show you um, a versatile way in which you can create um, a journal or projects. We're working with kits, They're a kit that um, Angela Kerr and myself have put together. Half is for sale in her shop, half is for sale on mine. All the links are on the link tree. Plus there's also a little tab that says store. You can go straight to the store on the link tree. And uh, if you need to purchase them, you can purchase them from there. Um, they are currently 40% off on sale. So if you want a bargain, go grab them now. Um, but what we're doing is one half, so one team of us will be working on rustic and grungy style. So more kind of like your kind of botanical theme and feel and, you know, you'll see lots of stuff like this. And, and just how you can do things with the same papers, but with more of a, a rustic, edgy, aged feel. And then the other team will be doing things with a bright and sharpie style. Um, so very much, if you, you've come over from Angela Kerr's channel, uh, very much the style of uh, work in which she does her beautiful journals. Um, so I've <laughs> left her to stay in her comfort zone, bless her. She looked at me, she's like, have I got to do rustic grudge? I was like, no, I'll do that, that's fine. <laughs> so we're having a lot of fun with this. It, it's been, um, well, it's just been really educational and I just love seeing how two people can come at one prompt from completely different angles. Because this is all I give them. I just give them these prompts that are on the side here. Um, and the, I, off they go, you know? And um, it's just been amazing. I've been literally overwhelmed so far by the amazing ideas. So to the point where I'm getting to my day and I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Everybody's done everything. It's been so amazing. But the great news is we're only halfway through. We've got another whole half of the month to go yet. So, um, oh yes. And tomorrow you'll have uh, Nigeria creates and samantha magnus so um just, like i say go to the link tree and just check those out there right okay so i'm doing delightful embossed digitals today so what have i got in store for you well i didn't want to just do like you know a, just a basic tutorial i wanted to kind of show you some different ideas and techniques with regards to embossing now obviously when you say embossed that can mean two things it can mean um well, it can mean three things. It could probably mean quite a few things, actually. But a few things that came to my mind was um, where you use um, embossing um, like glitter and an embossing pen, perhaps, or embossing uh, ink, uh, glue. That's the word I'm looking for, sorry. And then you can, you know, stamp shapes and then emboss and put your heat gun on. And then you can kind of bring that out to a lovely glittery uh, finish or what have you. Or you can use like... Um, uh, what do we call it, texture paste, and you can kind of emboss with that. Um, or you can use your embossing folders. Now, like I say, 
the, the word embossed obviously means many other things, but I think that the, the technical term for embossed literally means just as in, um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's raised. Years ago when they used to like emboss a stamp mark on their um, letters or papers and stuff, it just meant that there was a, you know, there was definition in it. So there was a texture to it. It, it was raised. It's like embossed wallpaper. You know, it's the same thing. It's a slight raising of it. I should have looked at the technical term first because I'm waffling now. Like I know I'm on about I don't. But to me, that's what that means, embossed. Okay. So, um, you know, I've had no idea what Angela's doing for her prompts, which is fun because we don't confer. That would just throw me right off. But I wanted to just show you a few different techniques that I've come up with in my um, path to rustic and grungy, which has been very interesting, I have to say. <laughs> and almost very nearly ended up in a house fire for me today. I'm going to give you a word of warning now. This, this, I should have a beep, 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 beep with a big X and a red. Do not try this at home, okay? Do not try this at home. That's a warning, I'm telling you. Look what happened today. Oh! <gasps> I could, if I hadn't gone in when I did, that would have caught fire, I'm sure of it. Now, I was, <laughs> I'm not going to blame anybody. Uh, I, no, I, I actually wasn't trying to burn the papers, funnily enough. I was just trying to dry them because I'd been rub rubbing a tea bag over my, um, I just had some wet, you know, used tea bags on the side from yesterday. I left them, I was, I put them in the bin, I was like, oh, I'll use those. So I was just, you know, merrily aging my papers a bit because obviously I'm doing rustic and grungy. And I thought, oh, these pockets of Angela's are ideal, I'll use those. So I rubbed a bit of tea bag over them and then, um, my other half had very kindly lit the fire because we've had snow and hail here this morning. It's been like seven seasons. Um, and I thought, oh, he's gone out and walked the dogs. I'll just go and pop those on top of the uh, log burner and they'll be dry in minutes. Well, of course, I came upstairs then to print out some vellum and got thoroughly distracted. Went back downstairs 10 minutes later. Suddenly thought, oh, better just check. Went in and look. So guys, don't put your papers on top of your fire to dry, okay? Now, I put one on the step in front of the fire and that's dried perfectly fine and there was no risk of house fire. So, you know, but yeah, that was just rubbing a wet tea bag over there that had been used yesterday. Um, and I'm actually quite pleased with how they've come out. So they've aged quite nicely. Um, I am going to use these, but I'm just saying, word of warning, you know, perhaps just don't don't put, uh, dry them on top of the fire. Okay, that's my health and safety warning for you guys. Right, okay, so what have I been doing so far? So let me grab my my trusty, my pal. I am going to apologise because I might be a bit sniffy today. Um, I've actually got a stinging cold. So <laughs> I've had to take, um, I had one day rest <laughs> yesterday. Did I actually rest yesterday? Yeah, I think I did rest yesterday. Because uh, we, we took, it's obviously the Easter holidays, we took my son to Legoland on Monday because we had to use up some tickets that we had. Um, and I just felt rough. And then, of course, got up yesterday morning. Then I thought it was hay fever, I'll be honest, on the weekend. But alas, it's not. It is just a stinky cold. I hate having colds. So I do apologise if I found, sound a bit full up. or well, I can't get my words out. But this is our friends today. Now, if you don't have a embossing machine or a die cut machine, you can do this. Uh, there is a video which I will try to remember to link down below um, and it is on uh, Francesca's channel, Junk Journal Joy, and she did an amazing, in fact I think it was a short that she did last year and she showed us how to emboss papers without an embossing machine and you can do it by wetting the paper, putting it in the embossing thing and then rolling over it with, I think she actually used a mason jar, it was amazing. Um, but yeah, so there are other ways to do it if you don't have one of these machines. Um, but obviously I'm pressed for, pressed for time and I need to show you immediately so I don't have time to wait for things to dry out and stuff. So I'm using my Sizex machine today. Um, I will be taking this in and out depending on which embossing folder I use because I have to, like, you know, alter for the, um, the depth. So the I've got this one here. This is from Gemini, uh, Crafts Companion, sorry. Um, and I love this one. It's I used this one in a tutorial back last year I think where we used napkins and I made it like faux fabric um but it's got like a crosshatch weave on it and oh, it's lovely it, it really looks like you know it's got such a texture to it so I'm going to be using that one today um I've done one that I'm going to show you after that I did with this one here um I couldn't tell you where these have come from because I procured all of my um embossing folders from a lady that I bought a previous machine from and she just gave them to me with that. So um, 
yeah i'm just assuming that they they run in the mill crafters companion perhaps on amazon i'm not quite sure um but uh, yeah i've used this one because I, I liked that nice pattern there and i thought it looked good you'll see in a moment what i did with that um and then i've also got this one here which we're going to be doing a few different things with as well and that's just a cheapy one from one of the cheapy shops so okay right um let me put those away let's get started so what i've done um let me do the first one first with my my very burnt paper so um i'm looking at different ways in which i can put pockets into my journal so i thought we'd have a look at some different embossed pockets today um and i'm going to take this one here because that's the one i did it with earlier and i i knew it will work um now the thing that i'm always struggle with is i i was afraid i'm going to get them wrong so i have to first of all feel right where's the raised bit and where's the dipped bit so when i'm putting it in it's going to poke the raised bit through into the dip bit so the raised bit needs to be underneath i hope i've got that right um now this is one of angela's pockets out of her half of the kit um that i've burned i'm so sorry angela i do love it i didn't intend to burn it um but there we are i'm clearly not safe left alone on my own am i okay there we are right so i'm gonna just pop that in there because i would like just that actually i'm gonna bring it down a little bit because i am gonna be folding that under aren't i so if i just place that there like so okay i'm gonna pop it in i think i'm gonna have to stand by this guys because i'm good but i ain't no rockefeller so i see does that fit in with it no i think this is the way i needed the other one so i'm going with the thin base and then the big one on top and they're going to just gently run that through there there we go and i do apologize my hands are stinking dirty like i say i've just been washing stuff down with a tea bag so i probably smell really nice oh there we are oh look at that now of course because i burnt my page bits have started to break off but that's okay now a little tip that francesca did teach us was if your pages are really brittle just spray them a little um, and it just loosens up the the tech you know the, the the compound and then they'll stay together better when you're embossing them so um there's one i did earlier that one wasn't quite as burnt um and that's come out really nice i'm really pleased with that so that's kind of you know giving me a bit of a botanical garden -y feel um and i've been able to age up my pages papers as well so i can use that afterwards in one of my pocket ideas um what was the other one that i did oh yes then i took um a pocket it was envelope actually i had one of the envelopes like this out of angela's kit um i tested it on the bottom bit first and then i was like oh again i put it in back to front so it's debossed de de it's the word isn't it and then i thought oh actually that's given me an idea so and i'm going to give you a quick demonstration i'm just looking around me for another one of those um any envelope oh this will do we'll use this right so i'll use one of these now, i haven't coffee dyed this one but this will be just fine and i think i can do this in such a way that i can fold it up now <laughs> i didn't intend on debossing this the first time i did it i had actually intended to emboss it but i actually really like the deboss so i'm going to do it in a deboss i'm going to explain to you in a moment why so what i did was i took my uh what is this my walnut stain and i have just rubbed it across the top so see where it's this is the raised bit yeah well, i'm saying that actually perhaps it wasn't the raised bit no it's not it can't be because that oh i don't know hang on wait a second no it is the raised bit it is yes that's what i made a mistake of doing of course so if you want it embossed then you need to do this on the in the in a bit in there right but if you want to deboss it then you need to do it on the raised bit so i'm doing it on the raised bit in it because i want to deboss this and you'll see why now in a second bear in mind mine's meant to be rustic and grungy and aged so i'm going to open up my little thing now and i'm going to just pop that side okay so i've tucked it in like it's tucked into the bag now right like that and like that now i'm going to take that one out because this was a thinner uh, embossing folder i hope you can hear me clearly and i hope i'm not sniffling and snorting in your ears because there's nothing worse than that let's be honest <laughs> it's like yeah we know you got to call keep yourself thanks there we go okay and i'm going to just gently run this through oh there we go i hate that bit when it pops out you know right now let's have a little look shall we and see okay 
and look at that. Now, the purpose of me doing it that way is so that when I open this up now, obviously we've got this lovely um, script texture on the outside. Very nice. When I open it up, it looks like hieroglyphics on the inside, doesn't it? Well, I thought it did anyway, but I just thought that looked really cool. And it was one way to cover up the whiteness of my, um, you know, when I haven't printed on the other side. Um, but yeah, I was really pleased with that. So that's one way in which you can do it. Now, another way in which I did it, when I did it earlier on, was to put one side through. And I actually, I'd folded in the um, envelope because I wanted to use just this section here. And I popped it in and I put the ink on and I popped that in and I debossed it. And I do, I really love it because it does look and feel like, um, I'm just gonna say, you know, when you go into a pyramid and you feel the wall. Yeah, we all do that every day, don't we? No, but it's how I imagine. So, you know, thinking back to like, I don't know, what are these films? Night of the Museum? No, not that one, M The Mummy perhaps. Um, and you know, they go in and they've got these like etchings and things on the wall and the wall always looks to be like really smooth. That feels really smooth. And it does look like old, you know, an old print or something on there. So I just thought that looked really good. And of course we've got, you know, the pin print in the background then of the garden and stuff. But I just really like that. So I'm gonna use that, I'm gonna incorporate that into something. Um, when I come to do my pockets, and I'll show you a few of those later on. But um, yeah, like I say, so if you wanted to do something really interesting, you see on the inside, I just think that looks quite nice. So I mean, even if you use it like a, uh, you know, for, what do you call it? Like a Rolodex thing, and then you have it opening up, and ooh, you know, we can't tell if the writing's back to front, can we? But I just think that looks really cool. It'll probably look doubly cool if I did it on both sides, but we'll see, I will think about that. Okay, so that's another idea for you. Use your inks, use your debossing, use your embossing, and again, you can, build on your you know because this is these are the digitals that i'm using out of the kit here so you know um and there are some in there that aren't you know fully um with pattern patterns on and everything so if you wanted to use something that does have a fully printed pattern on this is where this one comes in something like this so if you've got one that perhaps does you know like this the honeycomb pattern that might be ideal for it and i don't have many plain just patterned ones maybe with stencils. I don't know, can you emboss with a stencil? Do you know that thought has never even occurred to me? I can't imagine you would because you'd need something to push the other side of it, but perhaps with something soft. And I don't know, my brain's going off somewhere else. I ignore that. I'm squirreling off somewhere else. I need to go and investigate that idea. Somebody's going to tell me something in the comments, aren't you? Someone, come on. Have you ever done embossing with a stencil? That's just, I don't know, just popped in my head then. Right, so what else did I do? Well, I've printed now some pockets onto vellum. So I printed this page here. I'm sorry if I'm a bit up in your face, but I don't want to keep moving the camera. And then I printed this page here. I've cut some of it off. And then I printed these ones here, then out of Angela's kit, because I wanted those pockets. And then these ones here. So I basically just went through and found the four pages that I felt had good pocket shapes on them. Um, and then what I've done, so I'm going to just cut, let's, let's do this one here, for example, that's a nice square shape. So let me just grab my scissors. I did find my cover instead. Be pleased to know. It wasn't missing. I knew it wasn't missing. It's on the table instead. So I'm just going to cut along there in a moment. And then cut along here, like so. Hang them back away or I will misplace them. Now, this is probably not going to fit now in here. Is it? Oh, it might just. It might just. Now, my mother is very clever and she has very smartly written on the top of hers. So she's got a little label on the side that is meant to be the top. But I'm not as smart as my mother and I forget to do these things. So every time I pick it up, I have to have the same conversation with myself that says, Rachel, is that the bottom or the top? So raised bit there, indentation bit there. So I'm going to pop it on top of the raised bit. And I hope I've got that the right way around. But if not, I do have two other pockets to play with. And then I will just wing it and say, yeah, I meant to do that. <laughs> You'd never know, would you? Right, now this is quite a thick embossing for us. So I'm thinking I may just use the thin sheet. Let's see how we get on with that, actually. Because it's only vellum and it's not going to take a huge amount of pressure or impress, depress it, is it? There we go. Please don't pop me really loudly. There we go. Oh, does it frighten all of you when that happens? And it kind of clicks out and like, <gasps> heart attack. Even though I know it's going to happen, I still have a heart attack. Right. Ooh, look at those oh don't they look amazing oh, i sound like that silly woman off the, that film sorry <laughs> i can't even say the name of the film oh my days 
You know who I'm on about, the blonde lady. I think her name is Julia somebody. <laughs> <laughs> she an American pie or something? I sounded just like her then, didn't I? Don't they look amazing? Because <laughs> they got a cold. Um, right, there we go. Now all the ladies of a certain age are thinking, what is she on about? Sorry, guys. That was a, a millennial joke then. I was generationed yesterday by my youngest. Yes, I'm like... Because I, I, when I'm having a little rant in the car and I'm like, you see, the thing is, and if it wasn't for the millennials and he, he goes to meet mum, <clears throat> you are a millennial. And I'm like, oh, am I? Oh. He said, well, who came up with that daft idea? You'd have thought the millennials would have been the people who were born in this millennia. And I was like, no, it's your generation. I was like, all oh, right, well, I'll stop complaining about them now then. <laughs> Here we go. Ah, oh, they look amazing. I love them. So here's one that I did earlier, which I think look epic i'm really pleased with those um and i'm going to do just perhaps one more of those now um oh hang on hang on hang on hang on wait just a second no shall i do this one instead yeah i'm going to do this one instead um because i've got an idea right so we just cut that shape out bear with bear with i'm trying not to take too much time doing this i hope you're all having a good week sorry i should have started with that shouldn't i I didn't. I also need to do a little bit of housekeeping with you all in a moment. So if I forget, someone remind me. Because I do just have a quick thing I need to mention. But let's get this done first so I don't trap my finger in the <clears throat> emboss machine. Oh, there we go. Pop, pop. Didn't mean to jump that time. Right. Ooh, that looks nice. Look at that. It literally makes it feel like fabric. I love it. I could stand here doing these all day long. I won't, but I could. Right, I'm going to just do that one as well. And then I'm going to show you then. Now, obviously, you can do this with the paper ones. I'm just using vellum prints because it just makes it a bit more, you know, it's a bit more interesting for you, isn't it? But I've printed the digital onto the vellum. So I'm still hitting my delightfully embossed digitals prompt. Unlike the last one, I do apologise in my last video, or the last but last one, um, when I didn't follow the prompt at all. So what prompt have you guys missed? The serene snippets? Yes. So I, I, I owe you that, really, don't I? Um, right, okay. So I think that's enough embossing. I think now we can do something useful with all of these embossed bits. Okay, so I've embossed this um, pocket now that I've just cut out. And I've cut out the same pocket in the vellum and I've cut out a smaller pocket in the vellum. And what I plan to do is take this, I think, I'm just going to ink around the edges of that a second, just to kind of help it to stand out a bit on the um, pocket below. Obviously, you can put anything that you like in here. We'll see how these come out now. But just to kind of, you know, give it a bit of a, a bit of a drop shadow effect. There we go. That's it. That's lovely. That'll go in there like so. I'm just going to get rid of those white spots for there. That's fine. Okay. And then, right, let me ink, uh, glue that down. I'm using my Bailey Art Precision Craft Glue, which I'm still trial running at the moment. Actually finding it really good. This will be a good test for today now using it on something that's been embossed because it's not always easy sticking down stuff that's been embossed because obviously it's bumpy. So we'll see now how this goes on here. Put that there. Like so. There we go. Just press that down it over, give it a little rub, there we are, marvellous. Okay, then I'm going to take, my, so I've, this is embossed underneath, okay, and then I'm going to take the vellum cover that is also printed in the same uh, pattern, and I'm going to place that just over the top there, um, and I'm going to just pop a little bit of glue around the edges just to seal it into place although I will probably stitch around it afterwards but at least then it'll be stuck down we hope that it'll stay stuck down right so okay let's place that one there I'm 
trying my hardest not to heavy breathe on the camera for you. Sorry, guys, because of my cold. Um, so, <laughs> so what I'm probably going to end up doing then is just holding my breath. But that's really pretty under there. And it feels really... Obviously, you can't grasp how it's feeling, but it feels really cool. Now, obviously, you could do it the other way around and just put a normal pocket underneath and emboss the one on top. So with that in mind, I'm going to add this second tuck to this now but i am going to just uh, emboss uh, around the edges here i'm going to just try my best to kind of just tuck in the um the embossing folder so that i'm just doing the bottom corner there let me grab my sheet okay i did everybody there we go um if i can do it like that of course without it getting bent i don't know if it'll affect nah. um, oh i could do it at the top couldn't i let me change your brain now. Tuck it in the end there. Eh? There we go. And then we'll run that through. Oh! Pop! Okay, have I done it the right way? Yes, I have. Ooh! That looks cool. In fact, do you know what? I swear that the embossing brings out the pattern more, brings the ink out more. And then I think I'm going to just do the other side as well if I can so perhaps just that top corner there maybe I don't do the whole thing because that would be boring <laughs> um no I just want to do the, 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 the top and the bottom or the side rather okay let's just give that a go see how that looks yeah, it makes more sense to just feed that bit through really there we go and then take it back lovely job done let's move that out of the way there. Come along. Don't be tardy. There we go. Oh, I think that looks really cool. Okay, so I'm going to pop that now. And see how he's bringing the texture to the forefront again now? Um, I'm going to pop that on there. And then I have got um, two bits of um, embellishments then that I'm going to use just to... So this is vellum off the same page. And then this is one of my little tickets. Um... And I did have something else on here then that I was going to use with that. And I think I've... Oh, no, I was going to use the labels. That's right. Sorry. I kind of chucked everything out of the way just then as I was looking for something. Oh. And yes, I have cut all my nails, much to my annoyance, now <laughs> because I can't pick anything up. Uh, should we go with the black one? Because I feel that would pop better. Oh, wrong ink. It's just ink around there. Get rid of those white bits. Okay, so let us just pop some glue on here just to kind of put that into place and let that dry then and then I'll pop over and do a stitch around it. So pop that on top of there. There we go. One of the things, certain, this is certainly looking rather rustic and grungy. <laughs> let there be no doubt about that. So I'm thinking now on top of the embossed bit, I'm going to put that flower there. And then I was going to put perhaps the ticket here, maybe. Or there. Maybe have it look like it's coming out of the... Oh, no, I can't decide now. I was going to like really not get into... Actually, you know, I could just hang the bottom of the ticket on. I don't have to have the whole thing on there, do I? I haven't got anything thinner, have I? No. Oh, hang on a second. Wait, 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 wait. What have I got up here? No, they're not going to be rustic enough for me. Um, and then I was going to just pop that in like so and have that there. But maybe, can I fold that? Yeah, I can. I'm going to cut that. I'm just going to do it. I don't know why I was making it sound like I'm asking permission. I'm really not. <laughs> okay, right. So let's just glue this in place because all these little bits and pieces keep moving around on me now. Um, I do feel I need something underneath this. I remember now I have this paper here to my side. This is some lovely handmade paper that I picked up recently on a day trip last week. And I'm just going to put that behind here just to give it a bit of a, you know, a grinding, if that makes sense. Otherwise, vellum on vellum can sometimes... Oh, me vellum on vellum. So like a really blocked nose. <laughs> I have. Sorry, there's nothing worse than listening to somebody talking with a cold, is it? It's quite grotesque. I do apologise, guys. If I didn't have to be here for you today, I would have refrained and kept my sniffly nose away but couldn't let you down see there we go 
right. Okay. And then I'm just going to just pop, perhaps I'll put that this side then, shall I? Oh, we haven't inked down the, the little stick. These are so hard to ink bridge. And I say it like that because I designed the blinking things. <laughs> shall I pop that there like so? And then we'll have this then running along the base here. And then the stitching then will cover over all the other messy stuff at the bottom. Yes? Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, let's just glue him. There we go. And then we'll glue her down. Oh, let's put a bit under there. Marvellous. Here we go. Right. Now, let that dry and then trust me, once that's got a bit of stitching on it, it's going to look amazing. Right, so that's my little grungy pocket there, bear with. Right, okay, so the next one that I wanted to try was, let me just tidy the desk one second. Okay, so taking the other pockets now, these are the ones that are the triangle pockets. I don't know if you can see that on the, um, have I got them here? Oh goodness, somewhere, oh yes we are. So in Angela's um, add-on kit, there are some lovely pockets like so. Um, so you've got two sets like that on the page um, and I've just um, embossed them. So there's the one set, there's the other set there. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, um, I'm not going to cut that bit off the bottom because we might need that for attaching. I'm going to just cut them in half a second. There we go, let's so put that one to the side because that's very beautiful. And the one that is um, is in the plain blue, so in the kit it will look like this and when I've printed it and then I've embossed it, it now looks like this all right with me so I'm going to just place this now over this page here so I've got um this kit is out of uh, my this page is out of my half of the kit um and I've got this lovely page here with these um plants and such and so forth on and I just thought it'd be really nice to make a pocket out of uh with the images just tucked behind and they'd be just peeking through um on the now because this has got uh, lots of texture to it but you can see through so this is a great a great way to kind of like mute down pages as well if you really want to um in your kit so if you you know you're trying to make it look a bit more rustic and grungy and you know if you find that the pages are a bit bright well then you can add an, a layer over the top using your vellum um, so i'm going to just stick that down there like so and make sure it's got in all the bits that I want to grab in so I want to just get the edge of that shelving unit in there can use this again just to kind of flatten this down make sure that we get a nice grip there there we go marvellous don't have loads of seepage and waste with this glue either I'm really quite impressed with it quite sore on it uh, the girls were using it when we were at the retreat last month and i was like oh what glue are you using girls because i need a new glue i'm tired of not being able to get hold of um the art glitter glue here um and to be perfectly honest i'm just tired of how much of it i waste because it either doesn't come out or it all comes out everywhere i believe it's quite affected by temperature well crikey this is the wrong place to be the things that are uh, affected by temperature trust me this is all always temperature here's either cold or it's never warm it's always cold um right so i'm going to just cut around this now and then i'm going to cut um i think i'm going to cut an extra bit just in case don't worry i got extras of this lovely page okay and then down and around the edge like so okay so that's now given me a really lovely pocket there and I think I'm going to just to kind of tie everything in I'm going to cut hmm, maybe I'll cut this top shelf here off and I'll stick it on the front just as a bit of a nod as to what's inside. So if I could get the, that in there. And then cut up here. Okay. Oh, that's a nice bit of paper there, isn't it? Golly. Right, okay. So 
that can go on the little shelf on the top there so I'm going to just kind of move around a bit of a wiggly wavy shape there and then let's just ink around that I probably need a bit more ink now gosh this is the most I've talked all the last three days I think we can be out of breath. <laughs> Never thought I'd say that. Right, there we go. Okay, so we can either pop them. I am contemplating to see whether or not to leave that as an open pocket, hence why I haven't glued it down just yet. But I'm just wondering if I mightn't just stick that over the top like this. Yeah, I like that. And then you can just see a hint behind there of what's peeking through underneath and I'm going to have that as a little tuck spot on the front of my pocket because why not eh why not just take that off there and then we'll give that a minute or two to dry and then we will stitch a rooney around that too stitch a rooney is that a word I think it is um okay I hope we've all got some lovely nice plans ready for the upcoming Easter bank holiday weekend, visiting family maybe, having a break, taking some time out, doing some new stuff, day off work maybe, I hope so, whatever it is you're doing, nice church services, I hope that you spend it well and enjoy the time with your families. Okay, I'm going to just take that sharp edge off the top there because I don't like that. There we go. Much better. Oh, I like that. It's very non-fussy and I'm going to just literally go mad then with the stitching. Okay, so that's three done. Right, quick pause. I'm going to stitch and then I'll come back to the final project. So bear with. Okay, so the next one, I'm going to use um, one of these lovely labels that I've printed onto the vellum using that hash pattern. So you should have a set of three like that on your um, set of ephemera. So I'm going to just trim it down right to the edge of the actual label and then you can use any paper that you want to back this i'm going to use this bit of grungy music paper because it was on my desk okay let's just move that for a minute and then um oh, here we go let's go for this bit down here and i'm going to just glue that now on top of the musical notes um i think i'm going to just ink around yeah, just a minute as well because we don't want anything that looks shiny and bright it all needs to look rather rustic i'm gonna have to do this very carefully because embossed vellum is quite fragile okay let us glue by the way this bailey art glue is sticking the vellum embossed vellum down very well none of it's coming back off so far so just for you to take note because i always think to myself will that glue work um, but yes, so I can recommend the Bailey Art for this task. I know I've also used my art glitter glue for this in the past and that's worked well too. Although it does stay wet for quite a while, so it does have a tendency to slip and slide. You've just got to be more careful. Okay, I'm just going to really carefully now smooth that down. But I don't want to smooth it down too hard because I don't want to lose all of the embossing. So you've got to be careful so you don't press too hard. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to just, um, where's my ruler? Here. And I'm going to just tear away now the X. I'm going to leave a bit, if that makes sense. So I'm going to leave a bit of the music paper around the edge in. Oh, only a little bit this side because I didn't leave much that side, did I? Right, and then up above we will go, let's say, to here. Here. Okay, right. So I am now going to fold a bit of this over. Um, I should use my. Uh, where is it? I got it. I really need to get a small one of these. <laughs> it's a bit of an overkill, isn't it? Oh, let's get the scoreboard out. Oh, my goodness. Um, where's my. Um, doodly doodly doo. Where's my little score thing gone? Hmm. Good 
question. So I don't want to use that because that's really sharp. Oh, well, it looks like I'm using Steph's ruler again. <laughs> hey, Steph, could you pinch this ruler off your head? Because it's coming so useful. <laughs> right, all I'm going to do just is quickly score this in half um, so that I can like just literally want to do a gentle score line. There we go. So I can just fold that over to give it a bit of a protected lip on the top. And you'll glue that down now. That's why I said my scoreboard is a bit of an overkill for that. I just wanted to make a straight line. Because I can't fold a straight line like that to save my life. Don't know why. Set that down a minute. There we go. Right. That can go over and be stitched around now in a second. Okay. So, uh, what are the other... Okay, so I'm just piling them up on the side. I've been waiting for them to dry while I... Uh, before I go in. So... Okay, so for the final idea that I want to show you um, today, I want us to make um, an envelope pocket kind of thing using my lovely um, debossed um, digital envelope, Evangelist kit. So I've got this page here in my journal. So I've started um, aging all of the edges of my journal pages. Now I've gone through with my, um, uh, this, my deco cutter and um, I've started inking all of the pages so I'm really pleased with how that's coming along now I just need to finish inking um, but I've got the back of this page here and I want to do something with that page so I have this um, old envelope that I picked up at a charity shop and I want to do something with that and I thought what we'd do is to make a pocket that will go over the page and then we can tuck the envelope in and out and we'll give it a kind of like cool closure sort of thing and we'll incorporate this onto the envelope so this is kind of a two-part thing I'm going to do this as quickly as I can um so first and foremostly I think we'll do the envelope second so if I forget remind me I've got to do that um and I'm going to use this page at the kit I've got this old book page here and I've got some packaging paper here from this has actually come from Mehataj, but it's very similar to the Amazon stuff. And then I've got this old music sheet. So I'm going to just grab my, my journal signature a minute now. And I'm going to just check, because obviously this is a funny size. So I just want to make sure now that my pocket is the size I need it to be. So I'm going to want my pocket to be about that long. So where's my ruler? Let me just... Um, sorry, my nose is itching there. So I'm going to just tear that into, so obviously not giving you any measurements, you do this to the depth or le length of your page. There we go, and I'm just going to tear that off there, and then I'm going to do the same here. So obviously when the page shuts, I don't want there to be any <coughs> obstruction. Um, so I need my pocket to sit quite snugly, I'm going to say here. Um, where's the envelope? Just make sure now that that will fit down. Yes, that'll be fine. Right, okay, so if I take it the full width, I just don't want the envelope getting, you know, I mean, difficulty getting in and out, if that makes sense. So if I'm going to take that right the way here, I think, um, and we'll kind of make it a bit, I'm moving my ruler around so that the edge is not really neat, if that makes sense, because the page underneath it isn't really neat, so it would look stupid if it was straight like that. Um, where's my ink dobber? Let me just grab that. Sorry, my desk is starting a little bit of a mess. Um, I'm just going to very quickly ink around the edge of this. Very carefully ink around the edge of this. Um, here we go. Okay, and then across the top there, which I will probably end up falling down anyway. Right. Okay, so that goes there like that. Yeah, it does. Okay, now I am going to just ink this down now, all right? Uh, not ink, fold this down, sorry. Um, like so. And I didn't use my scoreboard that time, so I just hope now that that's nice and neat. And again, we'll just ink across the top of that. Lovely, lovely. Right, okay. Now, let's put this to one side a moment, because I don't need that for a minute. And what we're going to do with this is I'm going to just do a little collage on it. Um, just to make it a bit more interesting, basically. Um, so I'm going to put that piece there like that. I think a tear across the bottom there. And we'll just ink around these sides. Again, we want it all to look really rustic and grungy. Yep, marvellous. Okay, happy with that. Yep, I'm just going to glue that down there straight away. No messing about. 
no double mindedness. Okay. And I'm going to follow suit now with the other few pages. Okay, there we are. Right, so there's that bit there. Um, and then I've got this here. I wanted to put some of that on the other side. Um, and then the mem, mem Oh, actually, that bit there would be quite nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, okay, let's take that. That would be perfect, actually. Right, so let's really, like, um, you know, mess this up a bit now. Where's my... Um, Oh, I might just use this actually because this gives a really scratchy edge on it, doesn't it? There we go, that's it. And that there. There we are, that's better. Just roughen that edge up a bit because it was looking a bit too neat. Oops. Oopsies. Right. Kink, kink, kink. And if you're quite rough with your dauber as well, then that'll kind of tear and, you know get into it a bit then too um now quick thing about my housekeeping that i wanted to say so i should have put this at the beginning um but you know me i like to do positive negative positive uh, i just wanted to just very quickly just remind um some of the viewers um <laughs> angela and i both have received some quite unhelpful emails messages and what have you this week um from one or two uh, people who have bought kits from us. Um, <clears throat> now, I, I did make a comment about this in my last video, and I just want to reiterate um, this. <laughs> yes, this is my job, but this is not my only job. Um, and especially when it comes to doing things like orders, and well, it's not so much the orders, the orders are fine, the orders have gone out. It's the answering of messages and emails and everything else that can be a little unhelpful when um, it, it is just a case of perhaps requiring a little patience um and also when i'm getting multiple messages of the same query on several different platforms again not helpful so um just a, a friendly reminder please um unless you don't want me to be tipped over the edge <laughs> um if you do have a query about an order please message me on the place where you made the order from so if your order's on etsy please message me on etsy because i can't find your order unless i know who you are and if you message me on etsy i can see you i can see all your order history as soon as the message comes through it's all there on the right hand side uh, and the same with kofi if you message me if you buy something off kofi please message me on kofi um but getting emails from people asking about one or other platform is not terribly helpful um for the most part people are very polite and i'm very grateful for that and thank you and also people when they make mistakes are very apologetic and polite if it's that they've ordered something twice you know and honestly guys thank you for that i'm, I'm not having a go at all uh, but i did actually have a very rude email from somebody today and she was very abrupt um and she just wants to know when the order is going to arrive i am in a different country to you um and you know being rude about not wanting to go and send messages via um Kofi the portal or some something or other I think were the words that were used um well you bought the item from Kofi so that is where you need to message me about it otherwise I don't know who you are or what your order is uh, and secondly threatening to um complain and ask for a refund just because your order hasn't arrived yet again you're in a different country to me uh, I I have no control over the parcel once it leaves my my hands um so just a little bit of patience would be appreciated uh, my son actually had a really unpleasant um, experience yesterday um, of, uh, want to better with cyberbullying, basically um, a boy from school was being deeply unpleasant to him. It was a very upsetting afternoon um, and a, not a very nice experience for my son. And, you know, I'm trying to explain to him about how, you know, um, it's very easy for people to be rude and, and to say things that perhaps they don't always mean, Um on the other side of a screen because they forget that they're talking to real people um and you know as i opened this email this afternoon he happened to come downstairs and i was doing my funny standing waiting for the printer thing because i'm still printing yes waiting for the printer to uh move and he was like mom do you need the loo or something I was like, no no i'm just moving my weight he said i'm sure you need to no, not not like i said i'm just a little bit exasperated because i've just had a bit of a rude email from somebody and i'm just trying to stand here and work it out my body before i go upstairs and do a video because i don't want to be rude to everybody else about it and he was like, oh, well, that's not on. And I thought, no, and it's not. And I'm ex trying to teach my son about what is and isn't acceptable from people. And I, I need to make it clear. It's not acceptable. You don't get to be rude to people um, 
just because they're not standing in front of you. We are actual people on the other side of these emails. And whilst I know it's frustrating waiting for something to arrive, um, we live in a different world that we lived in four years ago and everything is now sent by mail. I, I wait for, you know, I send something first class in this country now and it doesn't get there for three days. So um, it, it's just life. You need to be patient. Please don't be rude. Please don't threaten me that you're going to demand refunds or put in complaints. Um, you, if you order something, it comes from another country, you need to just sit back and be patient. And if I don't answer your email immediately, there's a very good reason for it. Uh, mainly because I've got 1,400 unopened emails in my inbox that I need to also to deal with. Um, so, you know, it's not just you. Um, so I, I don't like to be a negative in the middle of the video, but I do feel it needs to say. And also, it wasn't helpful that you then went and chased Angela Kerr asking about an order that you booked with me that, that Angela has a lot of on her plate she works very hard too uh, and she has her own inbox issues to deal with and she's not there to field my uh, mail so um if I haven't answered you it is a good reason why and the reason yesterday why I didn't answer you was because I was actually dealing with some personal situation that was going on at home with my son so no checking on an email at the time for an order wasn't the priority and I'm not going to apologize for that I'm afraid um I'm not a, a huge corporation. I'm not Amazon. I am one tiny little person. I'm not tiny. I'm quite large, actually. But <laughs> but it is just me, and I'm doing it all by myself. Um, so if, if, if you can't cope with those timelines, then please don't order things from me. Um, you know, you just need to be patient because it is just a small part of the actual job that I'm doing here. And I'm doing this little collage. I don't know what I'm doing, but I've been waffling on. So I'm going to shut up now and change the subject because I don't want to put it down on everybody else um and i'm sorry but it just felt you needed saying because it was just not helpful today right so that is my little pocket i'm actually really pleased with that that's not bad is it when you're waffling and talking about something else I'm gonna go and put a stitch on that in a second um one other thing we are blemai or don Esta, as we say we're also trying to learn a bit of french now because we're in france in the summer um that was hysterical I had it on in the car the other day going into Swansea. Well, I never... Oh, Dan didn't sit there rocking, laughing at me, trying my bit of French. I do not know. I need a circle cutter. I need a small circle cutter. I'm looking around me. Oh, there it is. Okay, so... Oh, no, I'm not going to cut into those because they're too useful. Let me cut into something else. What can I cut into? Um, 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 I could use this, couldn't I? Ooh, no, let's use this because that'd be a nice contrast. Okay. No it needs to go on there i will use this right let's try i wonder if where's the scissors gone okay sorry i'm going to try and get this done really quickly because i'm just hoping i haven't gone like way way over time now okay that's fine one and then let's cut right down there and i feel like why is she cutting is so i can get my cutter nice and close to the flower two there we go lovely and then i'll just do should double them over really but there we go right okay um glue 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 oh, i need to have a drink i think i feel super snuffly now i hate having a cold it's so annoying because you know you can get up and move around but your head just feels like blah okay and then we'll put those on this you you know what i'm doing with those don't you of course you do and then we're just going to quickly i <laughs> should, really shouldn't do that with glue as well i should have done that before i glued but there we go there wasn't much spillage there we are actually it's perhaps better when it's wet not great for my dauber but when there's a bit of wet glue on the edge it does make the ink really like seep in so perhaps it is the right time to do it okay so we know what those are right um and i'm going to just put that on there now i think um, so where's my, oh, I've got a new one of these. Oh, and I bought, uh, where is it? A new, oh, I'll tell you the story about that. Not in this video, but at some point. Okay, so I'm going to go here. I'm going to try not to faff about too much with this. Or should I put the yellow one on there, actually? Because it's a, yeah. Okay, and then let's put it, put my daffodil there. Okay, and I'm going to just go here, let's go into the centre. <laughs> oh, okay, um, should have grabbed a brad first. Where are my brads? Oh, yes, they're in here, aren't they? Have you noticed how I got the names right today? Right, I'm just going to bring down my little set of drawers. Yay! And I'll use 
use that one there, I think. That specific one. <laughs> oh no, that's is it? No, that one I want. The only gold one in there, I managed to pick it up, honestly. Right. <laughs> there we go. Let me just put that through the centre. I never picked up. <laughs> okay. That's my new cork. And then, there we are. Let's put that open. Oh, now, what would be advisable at this point, as this is going to be a pocket, is just to put a little circle on the inside, just so that anything travelling through doesn't get caught on my split pin. So, glue right around the edge to the edge. And then cover that over like a plaster. Is that what you call them you're, where you're all from? A plaster? You know, when you have a boo-boo and you put a, a, a sticky bandage on? We call them plasters in the UK. What do you all call them? Okay, right. Band-Aid. That's the word I think it is, isn't it? Band-Aid. Yeah, there we are. So we've band aid it. You could put a bit of washi over that if you wanted to, but it's just to stop that drag. Um, right, let's just glue that down there too. My lid on my ink before I end up gluing that, and then we need another split pin for the top of the um, right. put that there with the way. Okay, right, so that's going to be sewn in a minute. Let's that, let that dry, but at least now that's in place. Okay. Uh, now, this is going to be inside, but what I want to do, I've got some lovely, little, let me start again, I've got some of this lovely fabric here that I had from Angela, which I love. This reminds me of something to do with my Nana, cushions, she had cushions, didn't she mum? She had cushions on her sofa, and I'm sure she had a big flower, I don't know, there's just something about the green and the flower, it reminds me of my Nana's cushions um, on her settee. I don't know what made me think of that then. Okay, that's the one side done. And then here. Oh, it's quite a satisfying feeling tearing fabric, isn't it? And I'll just tear that down there in it. Fray that bit and then that bit there. There we go. Just to give it all a bit of a frayed look. Not too much, but just a little. And then I'm thinking I'm going to put that on there and then I'm going to stick this over the top. So what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to get a book page, I think. Anyone will do. Right, and I'm going to just glue this fabric to the book page and then I can stitch around it then. Um, easier. Okay. Okay, and then let's just tear that off. Mm. Ooh, it's a nice bit there. Right, and then I'm going to just, come on, stick down. I'm going to just glue this now on the top of here, like so. But I'm not going to use this, obviously. I'm going to use this. Is me. There we go. Let's just make sure that glues down nice and firmly. Lovely chipply. Excellent. Okay. Right, and then I'm going to just tear around. Oops, too much glue on there. Tear around here. Oh, well, perhaps I better just cut. Actually, that's not a good idea. Don't tear because you're going to end up tearing away too much book page like I just did. Sorry, Billy. OK. 
Okay, cut that back there. I'm gonna just trim that edge there. It doesn't matter anyway because it's gonna be going on to something that's the same colour, so that's fine. Right, I'm gonna just do some stitching now and then we should be ready to see the final. Oh no, one more thing I've got to do. I need to do my little yes. Nearly forgot. Where's my let me just rub that back down. Okay. Sorry, I've been a bit a bit cack out of it now this afternoon. Because my my news is running. I'm so annoyed I got a cold. <laughs> I'm so annoyed and I know how irritated it is listening to somebody with a cold. I am so sorry, guys. There we are. Bennett, come on, all out you come. And then pop that through there. And then split that out. And then, um, 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 um. should put a bit of tape across there. Ooh, this is quite interesting tape. Should we have some of that over there? Actually, do you know what? I think I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put... Uh, no, yes, sorry, I've just had an idea. Wait, right, stick that back on there, because I don't want to waste that. Um, I'm going to take what is the, uh, yeah, music paper. That'll be perfect. Oh, I need a big piece of that. Have I got any more left? Yes, here we go. I'm going to take a piece of this, and I'm going to stick it on the inside as the flap, uh, uh, to go on the inside of the flap, just to make it look, oh, make it look a bit more interesting, basically. So let's just glue that there. Glue around the edge. There we go. Oh, my watch is telling me to stand. No chance, sir. No chance. You won't have to wait, Betty. I'm busy. Right, let's pop that in there. Let's lay it down so we know that it'll close. Try and get it straight if we can. There we are. Ooh, that looks quite interesting in itself, actually, doesn't it? Uh, but no, I'm not going to leave it like that. I'm going to cut it down now. Um, right, and then we'll cut around. Just really adds a little bit of interest. And then, doesn't it? And then, obviously, we will ink because we don't want any white, light, bright white edges going on here. Spoiling our aged and rustic look. There we are. I think that looks quite nice. I know it's not straight, but I don't care. It's not meant to be straight. It's meant to look old. Right. And then we need to stitch around this and then we can stick it on that. So I shall be back in a moment. Okay. So it's time for the moment of truth. So I've done some stitching around this now. Um, I've left the top pocket of the pocket on the front open. So I can glue all of this down. That's not a problem. I'll show you what I've done now. So that will go. Yeah, that's going to have to go in the thing anyway. So I'm just going to plonk that there. Lovely. Where's me? Turn it over. It'll probably be easier now. Flatten it into place. Go. Right, so what have I done with my little pre-made ready done journal cards? So I've got a couple of these lovely little cards that I've done. These were in Angela's freebie last week, which are available on her website and in my coffee shop. Um, and I've actually just taken the cover off a book. Um, where's the other bit of it? Oh, here we go. I just had an old kiddies book and the inside was really interesting. So I've used that to make to back my little tags. So you could put stuff in here, like you've got a little secret pocket in there now that you can, um, you know, stow a, a journal card. Or obviously you can put a larger um, journal card down into the inside of this lovely little envelope. So we can stuff our little bits of ephemera away in there. And then we've got this lovely, um, what I call pocket. <laughs> no, it is a pocket. Uh, and that's going to go on there like so. So let's just glue that down need to do this really carefully now because I need to be careful and make sure I stay right on the edge so that I don't come up too tight and then lose any of the space where I would be uh, putting the envelope in and out. 
There we go. I hope there's enough glue on there now. So let's pop that in here like this. Okay, and press. And press. And press. Oh, I'm loving how rustic and shabby this feels. Do you know what? When I was like, oh yeah, I'll do the rustic and grungy, <laughs> being all like magnanimous, I was a little nervous because I'm not very good. At, well, like, it's not that I'm not very good. I just haven't done much rustic and grungy. Um, Steph from the Hilltop View Jewels is my uh, inspiration when it comes to stuff like this and um, Jez at Nigeria Creates uh, because it's just not something I tend to do much of uh, but I'm really enjoying it, really enjoying it. I love that on there, I really love that. So that's my debossed pocket on there um, and then we've got our little envelope which will just nicely slide down inside. The flap will sit out and you can leave that poking up as high or as low as you like. And what I just thought would be really nice then is if we just put a little bit of string or something. Have I got any twine? I'm looking around me now. Um, oh, only this, it's not very aged, but it'll do the job for now, I suppose. Um, sorry, I'm just looking around my room. Let's see what I've got here. No, I haven't got anything to hand. So we will go with this for a moment. And... I'm going to... Oh, no, it needs to go around there, doesn't it? Okay. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. Wait, wait. Oh, I think I have got glue on that dobby, you know. It just tear off. Right, grab an old page. Put the dobby down. And then pull. Oh, look at that. See, I am not just a pretty face. And pull. Can you see what I'm doing? Sorry, guys. I'm placing my dauber onto... <laughs> I stuck my fingers together then. Placing my dauber full of ink onto the string and pulling the string through the dauber. And it is putting a nice bit of ink onto my string. There we go. I just didn't want it on because it was all white. All white? All white. Okay. Right. Here we go. Um. So, let's just... Plonk that around there, like this. And then, oh no, that should be longer, shouldn't it? I always get muddled when I do this. I'm sorry, I need to speed this up now because I've probably been ages doing this video. I am sorry. Um, there we are. And then you can literally just... Okay, right, I've done that all wrong. I don't know why. I can't think at the minute. Now my head's hurting. Okay, I think that looks really cool. I'm really pleased with that. Um, and I love this pocket. I love, 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 love. Um... And then we've got our little debossed pocket there. Now, let me just show you the other ones I did earlier, because you're going to be thinking, well, that pocket's nice, Rach. What's it got to do with embossing? Well, nothing. It's on the one behind. But here are the ones I did earlier. So we have... Uh, let me just find a nice busy page to put these on, because that's what I've done them for, so that they will, like, not damp down. That's the wrong way to say it. But um, mute, maybe. There we go. See? So, yes, I like that very much on there. Uh, let's stick it in place. Um, this is the one that I embossed the insides of. And then we put the uh, the uh, vellum on the top. And then we embossed some of the vellum. But it just feels really, like, rustic. And, oh, you know, it's all that texture going on under there. I think it's great. And I know I've left my threads long. And that's fine. Because they're going to look really cool hanging at the bottom. I'm determined. So I've got one of my little on there, and then another one of Angela's there. And then we've got this one here, which is just a nice straight pocket. And I'm thinking, let's go the other side of this journal, shall we? Ooh, that might be nice on there, actually. No, I need to put something on there. I'll tell you what I was going to do on that page there. If you don't mind bearing with me just a second, because uh, I'm going to forget after tidy this up, and then it'll be gone. I was thinking I might put that over there because that was a misprint, you see. So, bear with. Bear with! This is probably completely unrelated to what I'm doing, but if I don't do this immediately, I'm going to forget because that is how my brain works. Um, and then that's going to go on the outside there, so I need to just do that there. Just ruffle up the end. Okay. 
Sorry, guys. I feel like I should be like saying, it's okay, I'll do this later. I can't now because I've committed myself. So, there we go. I'm just thinking that would go really nice. Yes, it will. <sighs> On there. And then, sorry, I've gone all pop nosy again now, haven't I? <laughs> I can't see which page I'm sticking it to. There we go. There we are. Put that there like that. And then I'm thinking I might, I might, might, might just... Ooh, actually, wouldn't it be cool if we stuck that on there? And then you'd have... No, it wouldn't. No, I'm going to leave that. I'm going to put a bit of lace in the end of that. Right, so all that was for nothing. I'm sorry. I don't know why I needed to include you on that journey then. That was just silly of me. Sorry, guys. I know your time is precious. Right, okay. Here. Should we put this one here? Because it's a book page with a bit of music paper. Yes, I like that. I think that's going to work quite well there we are. Ew. I can't see what I'm doing here now guys sorry my eyes are going all blurry right I should have my reading glasses on I think okay <laughs> it's usually a sign you've got to lie down I think um there we are okay um where is it I find when you stitch stuff, sometimes it can be a bit tricky. I'm sticking it down at first, but you've just got to kind of like, you've got to persuade it. It's what it really wants to do, I find. There we go. So we can pop that in there then. Put some of those in there. Very nice. I like it. Tying it in beautifully. And then this one here. Ooh, where have you popped out of, my dear? You should be in there. Um, and then this one here actually might go quite nicely on here. Ah. Schoolboy error. Look what I've done. I've made it too long. Oh well. <laughs> oh well. I'm gonna have to just cut the end off. <coughs> okay. Ink, ink, ink. There we are. That's better. Job done. Sorted. No problem. And then let's put loads and loads of glue on this. We don't want this going anywhere, do we? Right. And then let's stick it on there. And that will help then to make Angela's lovely polka dot page look a little bit more rustic. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Okay. There we are. Now, I've left that there. So I've got that lovely little tuck spot there. And I've got a few more of these. And I'm going to pop one behind and then one in there like so. Oh, no, doesn't that look lovely? I'm really pleased with that. So there we are, guys. That is just a few. I'm sorry if my video was very long, but that's just a few little ideas there of how you can bring embossing with your digitals into your... Oh, and vellum, of course, because we printed some of the digitals onto the vellum. How you can bring them into your um, journals um, and how you can use the digi... Ugh, gosh, that's a mouthful. The digi kits <laughs> um, to... Um, enhance that embossing experience for you um and of course my most favorite test which was the one that we did last is this one here and um we've got our lovely pocket then with our lovely envelope and our debossing pocket on there too so there we are guys i'm going to leave it at that today please don't forget to go and check out angela's video if you haven't already been there first thank you so much for all the support that you're giving to us all and all the collaborators um in this event and i will be back with you where's my schedule gone uh, oh goodness it's right oh there it is right i'll be back with you in three days time on the 31st with bella to do our floral book page lace pockets got such a mouthful uh, but in between then you will have um jez sam um kate at pixie designs and shiva at berry mixed journals to look forward to so i hope you have a wonderful time with them enjoy your easter weekend and i will be back with you all very soon take care now bye bye <laughs>